Hi, welcome to Chris Cook for you too. Today I'm making another item that will be on your Thanksgiving or Christmas day table. Now, maybe a lot of people won't do this, but I know the majority of my friends will have it on their Christmas table. And someone wrote me and asked me, and I wish I could find the, find the actual comment that they put uh, on one of my videos, uh, asked me would I show them how to cook uh, turnips and mustards. Really, they was asking if I would show them how to wash them. So I think that she is a viewer that has watched my channel before. So a shout out to you, even though I don't remember exactly what your name was. So today I'm going to be cooking turnip and mustard greens with the turnip bottoms and I'm going to throw in some cabbage. Now the good news about this recipe is you can make this recipe a month out. Freeze it and it'll be ready for you when you're ready for it. And I do it all the time. This is one of those dishes that I never cook the day of. That's because it consumes too much of my stove. And I need my stove for things that have to be prepared on that day. My turkey, my ham, maybe my mac and cheese, things like that. So this is always a recipe that I will cook way out and just freeze it, which is what I'm doing right now. So the ingredients that you're going to need to cook this recipe, and I'm going to try to show you by cutting off some of, seeing if I can show you how you would take this off of the stem. Because these are pre-cut and they're pre-washed, which don't trust that hype. I always wash. This says that it has been washed three times, okay? I don't care if it's been washed 20 times. You still go ahead and wash your items yourself and I'll show you how to actually do it. But anyway, you have the turnip, the mustard greens, the turnip greens, they're pre-cut. And normally my collards come like this because I got so tired of rolling the collard greens and then uh, actually uh, cutting them up. That was just a long process, so I'm glad that they're coming like this now. I have turnip bottoms, some cabbage right here. I'm going to use a jalapeno pepper, a bell pepper, a little bit of bell pepper. I'm going to use an onion. I'm going to cut that up before I come back. The seasonings that I'm going to use is going to be salt, garlic powder, onion powder, and my all-time favorite seasoning in the world, I'm going to use some uh, onion soup mix. Now, I, this is going to be an item that I'm going to put only turkey meat in. Several reasons for that. Um, one of the reasons is I didn't want to cook it with any pork or any beef. I didn't want to use those items. And because there's going to be so many different items on your menu at Thanksgiving and at Christmas time, I don't want to overload the body because those meals normally are meals that as soon as people finish eating, they just go ahead and fall asleep because the meal was so tasty. So I chose to just put turkey in these. And if you have drinkers that's going to be at your home, if they're going to be using, you know, having spirits, the best thing in the world for them to do is to coat their stomach. Now, I've already turned that page, but I remember that from back in the day. So I just wanted to throw it out there. So you coat your stomach if you have heavy drinkers that are going to be at your Thanksgiving or Christmas Day dinner. Now, this is a smoked turkey leg drum. What it has been done at my market, they cut up the drum. And I think that this is a good way to do it. It's a big drum, and you see they sliced it up. So I'm going to put this in. This is a smoked turkey drumstick. And I'm going to add to that some smoked turkey. Let's see if I can push it down. Smoked turkey necks. I'm going to add that to it. Now this is really all the flavor you, you really need because this will flavor up just like your smoked meats will, will flavor up your, your actual dish. Some people do add a little bit of, of vinegar 
into white vinegar. Some of them uh, use apple cider vinegar, but whichever vinegar you use, if that's your preference, go ahead. I don't do it. These are the seasonings that I will be using. So I'm going to go away and get everything washed up. I'm going to pre-start my uh, smoked meats to boiling. And I'm going to start them with a little bit of seasonings. Because what I want them to do is to get a jump start on the mustard and the turnip grease. Now I don't take the mustard and the turnips. And of course it does not take the cabbage. As long as it's going to take the meat. So I'm going to pre-start that. Give that about a 20 minute jump. And then I'm going to add everything else. So I'll be back. I'm going to show you how to wash these greens. Only going to wash them a couple of times. But I'm going to show you how to do that just in case you're not going with a pre-cut green or pre-picked green. You're going to do it yourself so you'll know. So I'll get all of my ingredients all chopped up and ready to go in the pot. And I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm at the stove and my meat has been washed, so I'm going to go ahead and add it to this boiling water. I have a little bit less than a half a pot of water in here, but it's going to take it up to a half a pot when I get through add, adding this turkey, the turkey necks, as well as, and look at that, looks like a piece of ham. It looks so good. I love the way he cut this meat. Alrighty, so I'm going to let this boil roughly about 20 minutes before I add everything else. Now I did mix my seasoning, so I'm going to go ahead and put some of that in there. I'm going to put in some of my green peppers, my onion, a little bit of jalapeno. Alrighty, I'm going to go ahead and tilt my pot top, and I'm going to let her rip. I'll bring you back in about 20 minutes. Meantime, I'll take you and show you how to, hopefully, how to pick these greens and then how to wash them. Be right back. Okay, now I'm back, and I'm going to show, show you this, and I don't know how well I can do it because they cut these greens up really, really good. They did leave some stems in them. But they cut them up really, really good. Now, the mustards and the turnips, I normally mix them together. But when you get your, you're going to be able to tell your mustards from your turnips because your mustards have a crinkly edge. See that crinkly edge on that? And your turnips don't have that. See, your turnips have more of a straighter edge. Now, both of these come on a long stem like that, but the stem is normally that long. And what you want to do, say for this one, see that stem? It runs up the back of the green. What you want to do is to take the green away from the stem. Now, you can leave some of your stems because a lot of people do, but you can also take them away. If you don't like the stemmy taste, from the greens, you can take them away. Now, these were, were really, um, they were picked well, uh, and I haven't washed them yet, but they were picked well. This is, looks like the stem of a, of a mustard green, but just say if this was full, what I would do is just peel it away. See, I would peel it away. I would toss that one. Now, I do leave some of my stems in, but I don't leave no lot of them in. I don't want to be tasting all stems. Okay, so anyway, that's how you should do it. I hope that that helped the lady that was asking me about it. I'm sorry that I couldn't do more, but now, you know, with the way that everything is advancing, it's pretty hard for me to go back to just picking and peeling a lot of them, picking and pulling the stems on a lot of them greens because I'm telling you that's a tedious process but that's the way your mustard greens should look they most most of a flower look on the end and the way that your turnip greens and you can pull the stems on both of them but the way that your turnip greens should look is the stem is more straight now my preference is really collard greens but I just decided to do something different uh 
for this holiday. Now, I did shred my cabbage. Here it is. I have it already shredded up, getting ready to actually go into the pot. And here is my turnips. I've already cut them up. Okay. And I have them ready to go in the pot as well. So I'll meet you at the sink where I'll go ahead and show you how to wash it. And then we'll move on to putting it in the pot after 20 minutes of cooking of my smoke of my smoked turkey. Be right back. Okay, now I'm at the sink and I'm filling my my sink with water so that I can go ahead and wash these greens. Now, I'm gonna put salt in the first washing of my greens. I normally do about three washings, but this time since they've already pre-washed them, we'll see how much dirt I get off of them and then we'll go from there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put I'm going to mix them up by putting in both the mustard and the turnip greens. Now, why do you put salt in the water? The reason why you put the salt in the water is because bugs will, these are cooked in the, I'm sorry, these are grown in the elements, okay? That means they come up out of the ground in the open field. So, what you want to do is, I mean, there's all kinds of bugs, spiders, everything else, worms, you name it, they'll get on the greens. So what you want to do is, once you add salt, salt has a chemical agent in it that will make those uh, bugs release whatever it is that they're holding on to. So what we want them to release now is these greens. If it's any more on there. Now, I don't know if we're going to get any dirt from these greens. Because like I said, they were really animate about letting you know that they pre-washed them. But I'm not going for that. So what I'm going to do is... You're going to swish them down over in your water. Real good. And that's washing. I've seen videos where people wash them with dishwashing detergent. That's not washing green, so we're not going to even go there. What we're going to do is we're going to work these around, making sure that if it's anything stuck to them, we're releasing it right now. Then we're going to take them, shake them down, and put them in a bowl. Okay? Now, even if I'm good enough, fortunate enough, not to get any bugs or anything off of these greens, still going to wash them again. Swish them up and down so whatever's in there, it'll release. Okay, and if you could smell my kitchen now, because those turkey wings back there, they are cutting up. Okay, so I've almost released all of this, and I can see a little bit of trash. That's why I wasn't buying that. Yeah, how many times they say they washed it? I'm still gonna wash my greens again. Alrighty. Now I most, mostly got all of this out. And what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna refill my, but I want you to look at my water. See that water? That's not only green, uh, you know, the, some of the color coming from the greens. There's some dirt down in the bottom of my sink. So, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to release this water. And I'm going to make it run a second water. And I'm going to wash them all over again. So, if my water comes back clean, and it should... All right, then we should be fine. Okay, now you can see some of the dirt down in there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and release it, release my water. And 
let it out. Set that back so it'll catch. But, you know, these, these greens work just like chitlins or anything else that they tell you is pre-washed. Uh, it's always good to go ahead and do some washing on your own. And don't just trust somebody else when it has to go into your mouth or the mouth of your family. Just go ahead and do it. It's only a couple of minutes to take an extra uh, washing on these greens and you'll be fine. Okay, I see a little bit of sand. I can feel it too, down in my sink. So, that's the way you wash greens. I'm gonna go away and do the second washing. And then I'll bring you back and we'll get ready to put them in the pot. All right, I hope this has helped you. Uh, next time maybe I'll do it the, not the lazy way. And just go ahead and get me some uh, green so I can actually show. So whoever you were, if this is not enough of me trying to show you how to get this done, then just drop it in the comments. And what I'll do is I'll just get some that you have to pick and then I'll show you exactly how to do it. Anyway, I'll be back when we get ready to put them in the pot. Be right back. All right, now I'm back and I'm getting ready to put my greens in. And I just want to show you. This is my turkey part. See how my meat's pulled away? And I want it to come all the way off that bone. Okay, and it will. Now, my turkey is still doing uh, some cooking, but it'll finish up its cooking process when the, um, when the greens get done. So it's at this point that I'm going to go ahead and add in my turnip bottoms. And I'm going to put in my greens. Okay. And I'm putting it right on top. Now, these greens will wilt down a lot faster than your collards do. Um, but what I'll do is I'll fill my pot and I'll let it wilt down. And then I'll put the rest of them in. So we'll say that right now, that's enough. I'll let it wilt down some. And then I'll put the rest of my greens over in there. And at that point, I'll, I'll add the seasonings. I'll bring you back and show you that step. I'll be back in about five, five, ten minutes. Okay, that was five, six minutes. And you see how they wilted on down? Turnips and mustards don't take as long to wilt down as it does collard. And that's the seasonings that I showed you in the beginning. So now I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of these greens. And they really smell. They smell really good. Now, we're about two weeks out from Thanksgiving and these will keep in my freezer. And I did this on a day that I was not crammed. You know, I did this on a day where I could just do it without messing up so many other dishes because I'm overloaded and I'm trying to get everything done. So I'm doing this two weeks out and tonight for dinner, we're having tacos. So cooking these greens is no big deal. Now it's at this point, if you need to add some bacon grease and you have some bacon grease or some leftover chicken grease, you can go ahead and put that in if you choose to. I don't need that, so I'm not gonna worry about it. I'm gonna add the rest of my seasonings over in here. I don't know I'm believing throwing out nothing. I'm gonna cover this pot. I'm gonna let it go. Now, what you didn't see me add is my cabbage. Cabbage is gonna be at the last 10 minutes of cooking. Then I'll add my cabbage, maybe the last 15 minutes of cooking. And I'll bring you back and show you that. But that's it, and we'll let it cook. Okay, now I'm back, and here's what my greens actually look like. And now my meat is off the bone, like I like it in here. And I have, uh, I'm going to pull those bones out, that's why I moved them. 
But now it's time for me to add in my cabbage. I got maybe about 15 minutes worth of cooking. And that's all it's going to take for these cabbage to actually get cooked. Because I still like a crunch in my cabbage. Although I won't have it, it'll be just beyond the crunch, you know, stages. But these are my greens for Thanksgiving. So that I won't have to worry about. Let's just take that piece on out all together. Now strip it. Alrighty. So now, and you see how much meat I actually have. So I took my time with actually doing this. So when Thanksgiving, look at that meat. Look at that meat. So when Thanksgiving actually get here, This is just another great dish that I have to sit down on my table. And these have the turnips in them. See the turnips? They're done. See how they come apart? So you're getting all kinds of flavors coming from these greens. You're getting flavors from the turnip bottoms. You're getting flavors from the turnip greens, the mustard greens, the cabbage, the turkey, all parts. You just got to have all kinds of flavors in here the seasonings that i put in here which is the onion and the garlic and my all-time favorite season in the world lipton onion soup mix so i'm gonna cook this for about another 15 minutes now i'm not gonna plate this up but i am gonna show you exactly what it looks like i'm gonna allow it to cool I'll put it in a container and put it in my freezer and I'll take it out roughly two days prior to the holiday and I will sit it in my refrigerator so it can finish thawing. So I'll be right back after this cooks up and you get a chance to look at my cabbage and we're done. Be right back. Okay, now I'm back and these greens are done. They're done. And they're looking good. Oh. Now, what I will do on Thanksgiving is I'll probably sit this in my slow cooker and cut it on to warm and any little more cooking, which I doubt because my cabbage are looking good, but my cabbage may need, then I can go ahead and it could get it at that time. But the whole point is to say that one thing that it won't do is it won't stress me out, tire me out, or make me unable to enjoy my guests because this part of the menu is actually done. So that's what Chris is having, that's what Chris has for you tonight. I am making for Thanksgiving my greens. And in them, I have my turnip greens, my mustard greens, and some cabbage along with the turnip bottoms and all turkey meat. So I know that this dish is fantastic. I did taste just a little bit of it, but I think if you try it, you would enjoy it. And don't get everything, try to get everything done the same day. Some things you can do ahead and this is one of them. So you can knock that out and then you can keep on with your Thanksgiving dinner. And as always, thank you for watching. Chris Cook for you too. Bye. Please follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Chris Cook for you too. And don't forget to share this video. Bye.